Well, thank you very much, uh, dear Hans, dear Gulchin, for the invitation. It's a great pleasure being here and especially taking, <clears throat> doing a presentation about a uh, mega event. Uh, I watch partly the situation uh, from Brazil, where, where I live, and so many eyes are fixed what's going on, especially in the libertarian community. Will there be a success or failure? Uh, and if it should be a success, it will be have huge repercussions and uh, for all of Latin America, maybe even for the world. Now, what is a, a success in this sense? And it is basically a, a macroeconomic success. From my experience uh, <clears throat> visiting Argentina several times, actually since the 1990s, uh, what always amazed me uh, in, in, in Argentina was the microsphere works very well. So you have countries where you, which you visit and you, you notice right away, well, you can fix the macroeconomics, but if the microeconomics does not work, uh, forget it. But in Argentina, if you get the macroeconomics right, the micro is already there. The small companies, the business people, trust fear, as we have heard, and so on. Uh, the intelligence, it's all, all very present in Argentina. So it actually should be not too hard a task to see this experiment of an anarcho-capitalist, at least the self-declared anarcho-capitalist, taking over not a small country, by size it's pretty large. It also has an impressive history. And, but somewhat it is paradoxical, yes. Particularly if you see the person himself, so like in, in the US, they always want to know how's his family. And though we have here his family with Murray, uh, Milton, and Robert and Lucas. And Robert Lucas is, is, is one person, so one dog is called Robert, the other is called Lucas, which is a neoclassical macroeconomist who is said to have uh, uh, formally uh, crashed uh, 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 neo Keynesianism. Yeah. Well, the Austrian did it very long time before, but that is his reputation. But let's go on and, uh, as Hans asked me, do uh, some kind of interim report, nine months in power, nine months in power. And so I looked at the data. I tried to get the most recent data. And uh, at first I made some kind of, of balance. First, starting with the positive side, in the sense of uh, having macroeconomic success. Yes. Uh, because this will be the main point. The libertarian side is very problematic and would require an extra talk. But if he has macroeconomic success, this will have the impact at least for all of Latin America. And what is, Latin, uh, what is uh, macroeconomic success? Very, very simple. You have high inflation that you have to bring down, but not with high unemployment. I mean, this is the trade-off. Yeah, it's not just the so-called Phillips curve, but this is the task presented to him. Put it very simple, you have to bring down the inflation rate. How do you bring down the inflation rate? Cutting the budget deficit, okay. And now you cut public spending, which in the case of Argentina increases unemployment and this causes social problems. Now the trick is, so to speak, and I've always said that, what, why, when, when does so-called austerity work? Works, works? It works when you have private sector 
coming in. So you move down the public sector and in moves the private sector. So this would be, in very simple terms, the model uh, to, to follow. Well, and he started uh, quite well on this way. We have a budget surplus in Argentina since January. Yeah. I mean, he, he came to power uh, in December, and already in January there was a budget deficit. Behind the inflation is the central bank, and he managed a central bank re a sheet reduction. A very important step, and he, he, he did it technically quite well, I have to say. And the first results have shown up. Uh, with a reduction of the inflation rate, which came down in April already and continues uh, to, yeah, to uh, have a kind of disinflation. Inflation is still rampant, but it, the rate of growth is falling. And he has done the other part. Yeah, let get the private sector jump in. Uh, to compensate for the cuts of, of government. And he abolished uh, various price regulations, including the residential market. And uh, there were also a reduction of price subsidies. And his biggest feat, hard measure, if you imagine something like that being done in in, in some kind of European country. Abolition of eight ministries, and in some cases, complete closure of it, and a dismissal of around 30,000 state employees. So this is really, uh, in such, such, such a short time, uh, uh, a big thing. Now look, uh, the balance, uh, let's have a look at the negatives that are still here. The minus side, price inflation is still rampant on a year-on-year -year basis. It's still 237%. That, that is, that is uh, still very, very tough on a month-to-month -month basis. So monthly inflation rate, it is still 4.2%. So inflation is still here. Unemployment is on the rise. It's 7.6% in the second quarter of this year. The labor force participation, that's really a strange figure that I found, yeah? Just to give you an idea, in, in most European countries, <coughs> we have labor participation rates of around 70%. That means how many persons in the workable, uh, who theoretically are able to work, to really uh, go after business and, and activities. Yeah, it's, it's extremely low. Uh, there are many reasons from that. In, in, in Europe, uh, usually, the, which lifts the labor participation rate is the participation of, of women. Yeah? But uh, this could be one of the parts. It could all also be that when you have a salary, like a good salary as a state employee, it's neither your kids nor, nor your relatives need to work. Yeah, that's the other thing. So it's interesting to uh, research about that. Now, uh, this is the bad point. Uh, the industrial production is still weak. Yeah, as I said, you lower the budget <coughs> side, the governmental side, and you make austerity, but this will be a disaster if the private sector does not uh, expand to compensate for that. So the industrial production is weak, uh, negative. Uh, it has fallen on a year-on-year -year basis by 5.5. 4% and month to month, it's still weakening from month to month of 1.6%. Now the largest, uh, biggest preoccupation from, from my point of view, I have worked in this area of, of sovereign debt analysis, the external debt continues to rise 
We are now at 290 billion US dollars external debt and the foreign exchange reserves are falling. Yes. I mean, just imagine you have reserves of 24 and debt of 290. Yeah. So uh, he must get foreign exchange. And, but at the same time, and he initiated this, Mille initiated this, this uh, the currency continues to weaken. It, it was a managed devaluation and the managed devaluation continues. So from 322, when he took office, uh, to now, uh, it is from 322 uh, Argentinian pesos to 963. Now, what does that mean? Uh, that means that in domestic terms, your foreign debt burden has tripled just because of the exchange rate. Because before I can transfer, I have to bring it up at home. Yeah, so this is the dilemma. I see the major obstacle for success. And uh, <clears throat> let's hope that he will make uh, it work. I think a uh, 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 petition of the, for, for the IMF uh, will be necessary to, uh, to get along with that. Now, here I have his official projections of uh, Miele himself when he presented the budget. Normally, the finance minister does this, or the economy minister, but he did it himself, the latest budget that he entered. Now, what does he foresee, or his staff, <coughs> for next year, as, as of September 24, for the coming year, budget year? An increase of the gross domestic product of 5%, and a sharp reduction of the uh, inflation rate to uh, 18%. And a continuation of the exchange rate uh, uh, devaluation and uh, continue with the primary uh, deficit fiscal surplus. A primary fiscal surplus means that surplus uh, or that uh, balance that is calculated without interest payments. So pretty optimistic. Uh, this outlook, let's see what will happen in the coming year. Now what came as a surprise for many people is that his popularity <clears throat> is still going well and it actually has increased uh, from uh, July to August. This is this 39 figure on the right side. Well, it is not a majority, but nevertheless, uh, it seems he still has a standing. There's still hope in the population that things will turn out all right. Now, how did it happen that he got elected? And I would say because of frustration. What is the frustration? The misery that the Argentine uh, uh, people had to feel over a long period and finally they got fed up. And particularly when you make some comparisons, <clears throat> there's a so-called abundancy index, uh, several commodities that are put together and they measure more or less how easy it is to get access to it. And we see in this group, Argentina is failing. Yes, so people since 1980 have lost uh, abundancy, have lost uh, well-being uh, in, the, in the form of material well-being, of access to goods and services. Yeah? While uh, not just in football, but also in performance, 
uh, Brazil, uh, the neighbor, uh, the big uh, other country in, in, in South America has gains. Yes, that, that, is, that is just amazing. I mean, our, our big neighbor who was always very weak compared to us in the living standards now is going ahead. And <clears throat> we also see that, of course, China is moving ahead and, and India has made some uh, impressive performance as well. So this is frustration. Yeah, after a while it, you notice, okay, we are falling behind what's wrong with our, since 1980, yeah. And so the other frustration is that, you know, one gets accustomed to a certain level of inflation, okay, you adapt to that. But when the inflation explodes, uh, uh, things get, you get angry, you, 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 you lose your orientation. And this has been extreme uh, in, in Argentina, uh, and particularly in the past couple of years. That's a typical curve uh, that you have for hyperinflations. Yeah? It moves along, it moves up, step by step, and suddenly it becomes exponential. And if you don't do anything, the whole uh, system breaks down. And this is the case here. And uh, when we look at the uh, annual core inflation rate, uh, we see that it has risen dramatically uh, over the past two years. Uh, and uh, that this is already falling. It's still extremely high, but at the end uh, of this uh, uh, chart, that's for July, uh, we see that the annu uh, annual uh, inflation rate is, is coming down, but it's still extremely, extremely high. Now, uh, this is the monthly uh, uh, inflation rate, month on month. So you have a very nice picture of what has happened. So month on month, it explodes, yeah, in the 22, 23. And this has come down drastically. So this is a, a feat, a, a great, great deed that, that has been done. And, but we also see that in the end, in this little twiggle, uh, it's already uh, not falling, uh, continue to fall. Yeah, it still remains very high. Important is uh, the inflation expectations. And we see that they have fallen drastically when he took office, but since May, they are no longer falling. So people, in the terms of expectations of the inflation rate, they no longer expect much of a drastic fall. This is some kind of preoccupation that this uh, trust, okay, we are going to five, six percent, per year, uh, or even 10% would already be a big thing, is no longer in the expectation. And inflation expectation feed into uh, inflation. I mean, if there are high uh, expectations of an inflation rate, it produces inflation because people want to get rid of their money. Now, the central bank balance sheet this is also interesting. Yeah, we have this explosion, which, which is really correlates well with the price index. So we all know that. That's no, not a surprise. We also see the big cut in the central bank balance sheet, which, which was a very important uh, management fact that he achieved. But also here at the end, we see this uh, slight upturn again. So will it continue, or was it just one big step? And uh, after that, we're stuck again with the problem. And when we look at the latest figure uh, more clearly, uh, since September, no? 
of uh, uh, last year. Uh, so we see how it arose uh, before he took office, how he slashed it, uh, the central bank's balance sheet, because it's the, the center, the origin of the money system, yeah, where it's created and then floods into the economy in various ways. Uh, and we see the pickup there, yeah, the falling. Uh, so, okay, well, let's see. Yeah, it's not all rosy. Now, let's go to the government. And here is uh, the greatest achievement. Let me go back. Uh, yeah, here. Okay. Uh, budget value. Uh, see, uh, full numbers, not relations uh, in, in Argentine pieces. And we see that as soon as he took office, he moved out of the deficit into a surplus. Yeah by the means that I mentioned, slashing simply government expenditures, slashing government. Now this has to be seen uh, in connection with employment and, and production. Yeah? As I mentioned, you slash the public sector, and if you slash only the public sector, the economy will uh, contract uh, if there is not a compensating uh, expansion in the private sector. So we have to look at this. And the first thing we notice that the employment rate has shot up. Also with the caveat that it has come down in the past couple of years before he took office. So you have this falling unemployment rate yeah, and then he takes office and it goes up. Uh, and uh, if uh, production, private production, does not uh, get in to compensate, we, we have a problem. And so the industrial production is, is negative on the year-on-year -year basis in all, so from one month to the year before the same month, the statistics. And we see a deep yeah, recession in the industrial production. And uh, when you at the same time have inflation and a reduction of production, it's called stagflation. Yeah, so, uh, if you want an etiquette uh, label for what is going on now, it is uh, a stagflationary interim situation. And uh, the industrial production, when we see here, okay, that a big fall in, oops, we do not very much see it here. Uh, it has a big uh, fall in March and April. It continued to fall, and only what you see blue, there was this little uh, uptick um, in uh, April. And in May, June, July, we are already again in negative territory. Now, uh, to conclude, I see uh, the biggest threat uh, from the external side. Yeah, I think in the press, as far as I have read it, it gets rarely mentioned. Uh, uh, we know, I once wrote an article, it was in 2020, uh, that Argentina, a tradition of default, yes. And it would be very sad if we would see that again, no? because uh, when we look at, at the, uh, the uh, show up many more figures, but just basically, yeah, yeah, yeah one can see it more or less. Uh, <laughs> you just make a line, yeah, for the left graph, yeah, it goes like that. That is the external debt as it is, is growing, yes. And on the right side of this graph, you have the reserves that are falling. I mean, uh, this can't go on. Yeah, what can't go on will stop. 
uh, how to generate uh, the finances yeah, to finance uh, the international debt, uh, private uh, banking sector, international private banks won't lend any more money as of now uh, because it has this mark of being a defaulter. Uh, Argentina is already the biggest debtor of the IMF. So will the IMF jump in? That's another point. And to take this point as a, a, a challenge, Miley must be uh, comporting himself in a way to please the IMF. Yeah, so this is really the trap uh, he is in. And so to make uh, matters worse, and I've studied uh, various developing countries uh, as to the debt, debt uh, problem, the sovereign debt analysis, uh, the problem is that on the one hand, so it's a dilemma, on the one hand, you need to devaluate your currency to reduce imports, and be more competitive with exports. So you need to devalue. That's one side of the coin. But as much as you devalue in local currency, your debt increases. And first you have to bring it up nationally, usually when it's a government debt, by taxation. So, uh, what is my outlook? Oops, going back again here. Okay, my, the outlook. First, the monetary problem. The monetary aggregate M1, which is a reasonable inflation precursor, yes and uh, the policy interest rate, uh, which he brought down, or the government brought down, or the central bank brought down to stimulate the economy. That's another dilemma, yeah? You have to stimulate the economy, as I said, to get the private sector going, because you've got the budget deficit, yes? And then on the other hand, uh, it will, if you do not lower, if, if you lower the interest rate to stimulate the private sector, you give room for the money to expand uh, further, furthermore. So uh, these are my, this is my conclusion. Let's watch for inflation. Uh, it, will, it, will it be that the inflation reduction will go on? My data here uh, think say that, that we could be a little bit skeptical to expect that uh, in, in the coming month. And the other is that will be decisive in January next year, where a huge payment of interest comes due, and how the government will manage that at that time. Well, thank you very much. In, if someone would like the slides, I'm happy to send it to you. Just drop me an uh, email and I'll do that. Thank you very much.